all done for free, and it was all done because somebody was given the latitude in their day job to do something outside of their core objectives. And so give people the chance to innovate and the freedom to experiment. Now aligned to that has to be embracing learning through failure. If you give people the latitude to do these, these kind of things, then some of them won't work. And they mustn't fear the consequence of that being too negative. So I love this quote from the founder of IBM. The fastest way to succeed is to double your failure rate. Before showing that quote, if I'd said, hands up if you'd like to double your failure rate, how many hands would go up? How many would go up now? Still a few, not so many. But if you think that every time you fail, you learn something very powerful, all you've got to do is make those failures quick and cheap and painless, and your organization gets smarter and stronger more quickly. So the wonderful thing about this modern, digital, technology-enabled world we live in now is it's very easy and usually very cheap to design an experiment to give us a bunch of data to inform our important decisions. But you need to have the mindset as an organization to go and look for those data points and those experiments. Otherwise, you end up just defaulting to asking senior people for their opinions. In the absence of data, that's how many organizations make decisions. They look to the most experienced person, often the highest paid or most senior person in the room, to decide. And that is absolutely appropriate for matters of big strategy and things that require a broad organizational view. But if you're trying to decide the color of blue or anything else which is very close to the customer or close to the product, they are the least informed people in the organization. They're typically the furthest away from the answer. So you need to bring data into those decision-making processes and have a culture that doesn't just allow people to challenge the perceived wisdom with data, but actually requires it of them. And if you are a person in Google who had information that contradicted a view that was taken by senior management and you didn't speak up, then you are in the bad books. And that should be the culture of all organizations. So it's really very often the case that new digital and technology-driven solutions are better for the customer, but they are lower margin for the provider. As a provider, you have two options. You either try to keep your customer in the high margin world that you're in today, or you go with them to the newer, lower margin world of the future. If you think about Blockbuster, Blockbuster 10 years ago, what was their business model? What do they make their money on? What did they make their money on? Late fees, exactly. You paid five pounds to rent a video for a night, and you bought it back four days later and paid another 15 quid. That was their business model. So when Netflix came along with their DVD by, DVDs by post solution, which you paid 10 pound a month for, and you got a new one when you sent the old one back, Blockbuster didn't like it because it didn't have the same margin characteristics, even though it was a better consumer experience. So Blockbuster IPO'd in 1999 for five billion dollars. They had the opportunity to buy Netflix the year after for 1% of their IPO proceeds. They didn't take it because they didn't like the margin characteristics of the business that they had the opportunity to buy. So when it's inevitable that the world is gonna go to a lower margin place, either go there with your customers or somebody else will go there and take your customers. And that's a hard thing to do, but it's an important and it's the only thing to do.